Today I felt inspired to talk about alms. It's something I do often. And when I feel inspired, I, I feel inspired to share. So I'll talk about alms in the, in the village of Sri Lanka. And I'll also tell uh, maybe one or two stories about going alms, going for alms in Kauai, Hawaii. Sometimes people in Asia call it Hawaii. But it's really called Hawaii. So I'll tell one or two stories that also inspired me or made me feel wonderful. And I'd like to start with uh, two Dhammapada verses. The Dhammapada is uh, a book of Buddhist poetry which is very wonderful and we can find uh, so many teachings in the Dhammapada. So we'll start. Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase So we'll start with a verse from two verses from the Dhammapada Actually, I've said one of these before. The Dhammapada is very wonderful. And we can find all of the teachings somewhere within this book of poetry. It's one of the most famous books. And I'll probably have a post uh, or a video of, of uh, how great this book is and what it means and a little information about that. But we'll start. Yatapi bamaro pupam one gandam aheteyam paleti rasamadaye evam game muni chare as a bee gathers honey from the flower without injuring its color or fragrance even so does the sage go on his alms round in the village Another verse, that was uh, verse uh, 49, and this is verse 118. Punyanche puriso karira, karira nam punapunam, tamhi chandam karira te, sukho punyase ucheo. Should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him find pleasure there, for being blissful is the accumulation of good or doing good. So these verses uh, can describe a lot about going for alms, bindapata in the villages. And today I came back from my alms round, something I do every weekend, just about every weekend, except maybe when we have exams. When I have time and I'm available, I try to do this. And it makes me so happy, so happy. And, and a matter of fact, after I came back from eating, I, I quickly tried to come to the studio to record something when I was most inspired. When I'm inspired, I'd like to share. So this is uh, several hours later. <laughs> the studio wasn't available. But it is very nice to, to go for alms, and I'll explain um, a little bit about alms in Sri Lanka afterwards. I'd like to start with a, a couple of stories from going for alms in America, in Hawaii, 
on the island of Kauai. Now, when I go alms in, in America, I often wait in front of each house, not too long and not too short. They're usually inside their house just doing whatever. They might have air condition on. They might be looking at the TV or the internet or whatever, their telephones or a book. And not, not many people look outside their, their windows. So what I do is I wish loving kindness. I wish loving kindness in front of each house. And when I'm finished, which is about 30 seconds to a minute, then I'll go to the next house, maybe like a minute. I stay there not too long, not too short. I try to go on a schedule at the same time so that they know that I'm coming. They'll usually see me at the, at the same time a little bit like the mailman. And so I went down one road, and um, as I was wishi wishing loving kindness, uh, uh, some, some uh, local people, uh, um, these two girls, they were really upset about this, about me going uh, for alms in the village. They sort of started yelling at me. And I ignored and continued with my loving-kindness practice. And the next day I was contemplating whether I should go down that road again. And I thought, well, you know, there are many houses and we cannot satisfy everyone. Uh, I'll just continue. But as I was continuing, I think it was the next day or the next week, I can't remember, I usually go in that area two times per week. So I think it was actually the next week. One of the, one of the people, he, he sort of, out in a different house, he kindly went up to me and he says, you know, I think you better go down a different road. Hawaii can be a very dangerous place. You think of it as like paradise or whatever. And you might have someone who's a lot shorter than you or something like that uh, telling you, you know, maybe, maybe you better find another place, to, another road to go down. You have to take that seriously. And of course, we don't want to cause damage to the faith people. We don't want them to, to get angry at us, especially if we're wishing loving kindness. We don't want to do that. So I did. I, I took another road. I took another road, and I came across these uh, very wonderful people. It was just I, I could go back to the main village, uh, this road, or I could go back to the, the main village, another road, avoid those two people. And so I went down this, uh, this road, and I met these wonderful people, a married couple with one cute little girl. Her name was Coral, with a K. I think she was born in, in Kauai. And she really inspired me, and I, I thought I would tell this story because it really inspires me. And when she saw me, she would, they, they knew that I needed food. I don't think they asked me. And uh, the girl, the little girl, she was maybe two, two and a half years old. She could speak a little bit. She could walk around a little bit. And she would put food in my bowl. And after she put food, all the food that was in her hands in my bowl, she would say, mas yum yum, mas yum yum. And the mother explained that she's learning Spanish. She's being brought up bilingual. The father spoke Spanish. Mas means more in Spanish. And yum, <laughs> yum is her word for food. Mas yum yum. More food, not for her, for putting in my bowl. 
it was always a pleasure to, to walk down this, this new road because uh, it inspired me that uh, this girl, she wanted to keep giving more food. Like she'd, she'd put an orange in my bowl and then she'd say, mas yum yum, and another orange would come, mas yum yum, and she'd keep doing it again. Should a person do good, let him do it or let her do it again and again. Let her find pleasure there, for being blissful is the accumulation of good. This is that verse that I spoke about. And as a bee gathers honey from the flower without injuring its color or fragrance, even so does a sage go on his alms round in the village. So I think those two verses explain what happened. First, I didn't want to disturb people, to cause harm to the village. Like a bee doesn't want to collect its nectar from the flower without harming the fragrance and the color. And if someone wants to keep doing good again and again, let that person do good. It makes them happy. And the parents did that. And she used to call me, I was, I was told that the, from the parents that, that the, the girl who could barely speak English called me Buddha. She referred to me as Buddha, which is very nice also. And it inspired me because in Asian countries, like for instance Myanmar, Sri Lanka, the kids also love to give food. They love to give food to the monks. And so I found um, it very inspiring that even in the West, uh, this tradition could still magically happen without any prompting. Maybe she was from Asia, maybe in a previous life, but she loved to do it. And another time, when I was on my way to go to Hanalei, it's on the North Shore, the very North, not the very, very North North Shore, but uh, quite North. It's a very beautiful place. It's like another world. The island itself is like another world, but Hanalei is like another world. And I used to be able to go to Big Save Supermarket and I was allowed to stand outside. And while technically we are like beggars, I mean, even the bhikkhu sort of means that, we're not like real beggars. And so what I do is I would stand to the side, maybe about 15 feet from the entrance, and I have my eyes cast down, and I'm there just with the bowl, and I just wait. And eventually, someone will try to put money in my bowl, which I don't allow. And then they ask me, well, what are you here for? And I say, well, this is my bowl, and this is, this is for food. This is for my meal. I don't eat after 12, I don't eat dinner, and I don't touch money. And at that time, I said, I haven't touched money in 17 years. Now it's 23 years. For myself, I haven't touched money. And usually they run inside the supermarket and they come back outside with, with food. And usually within an hour and a half, an hour, an hour and a half of waiting, I can get my meal for the day that way. And the owners of the shopping mall, actually, they, they come out about 12. We can eat after 12, actually, uh, because uh, the, the time difference. Uh, we go by the sun. And they usually look at my bowl around 12 and if there's not enough food, they usually go inside and they, they also give me uh, food as well. It's a very nice, uh, very nice experience to go to Hanalei, to stand outside the supermarket with the permission 
of the manager of the supermarket and with the permission of the shopping mall owner. It's an outdoor shopping mall with a supermarket on the edge. And so I was on my way and a car, I was on my way to the bus stop and a car stopped. And he says, I'll give you a ride to the, to the next town, get in. And so I did. And as we're driving, he, he, a lot of people, they, they, sometimes they give me rides because they want to know what I'm doing. And he says, I want to ask you a question. My girlfriend, she sees you walking down the street and standing in front of each house. She doesn't know what you're doing. It seems strange. And so I told him. I told him that I'm wishing loving kindness in front of each house and I'm collecting my meal and that I don't touch money. That I don't eat after 12, not 12, uh, after high noon. And this is how I get my meal. And I wish loving kindness to spread loving kindness and also to protect my mind to keep my mind occupied on wholesome things while I'm trying to get my food, trying to get my meal for the day. And he, he said, so where are you, where are you going? Where are you going after, after you go to the bus stop? And I said, well, I'm going to go to Hanalei. I'm allowed to stand in front of the supermarket, the big safe. In Hanalei. It's a small town. It's a small island. We know everything. Everybody knows everything. They know the exact place where I'm going. And he says, you know, I, I gotta go, I gotta go to my house for, for a little bit. If you don't mind, I'm gonna stop there. And then afterwards, I'll drive you anywhere. Anywhere you want to go. And I agreed. I said, okay, that's good. Don't have to wait for the bus. And we're driving to his house, and he, he, he says, you know, if, 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 you, if you had enough food, if you got enough food for the day, would you still go to Hanalei to stand outside the supermarket? And I said, so probably I would, I would go back home. I'd go back home and eat my meal. And we pulled into his, into his driveway in the house. I recognized the house. I knew which house it was because I, was, I used to stand in front of his house. And I didn't know, I didn't know who was living inside because no one ever came out. And he's there. He's inside his house for five, maybe five, ten minutes. And he comes out with a, a big Ziploc bag. You know those big Ziploc bags? Well, if you're from America, you know. It was filled with rice and I think some cheese. I think I can remember. It was filled with some cheese. And I can't remember if there's something else. But it was enough food for the day. And so I asked him if he wanted a blessing. And usually people who give me food, they're very interested in getting the blessing. Or they're open to it. And so I told them the ayu wano sukam balang. Ayu is long life. Wano is good looks, refreshed appearance. Sukam is happiness and balang is energy, strength. And I explained to him in English what it means. And I explained to him about cause and effect, about how I get these qualities from the food. And that because of what comes around, goes ar around, cause and effect, he gets that back. He gets that back, and I give the chant. And usually people feel very happy when I give the chant. Abhivadana sili sa nicham mudha pachahino chattaro dhamma vadnanti ayu vano sukham balam. So I just, that's it. Sometimes I say something before as well, but usually that's what I chant. And afterwards he says, you know, 
I really like what you're doing. And I said to him, you know, <laughs> I really like what I'm doing too. And I said to him, you know, sometimes I'm a prop for people to make merit. And I put myself in this position so that people can make merit. Instead of going to Hanalei that day, I went back home to the place where I was staying. And afterwards, <laughs> he would send his kids when I was on the road. The kids would come out and they'd have an umbrella. I'd have my umbrella. They would have their umbrella. And they would come and they'd chase me in a friendly way so that they could give me food. And they'd, it must have been the snacks that they had in the house. Maybe they were picking it themselves. There's these little, there's like these peanut butter and jelly, packaged peanut butter and jelly things and some other things I can still remember. It's always good to see that the kids like to give to the monks. And it inspired me. And sometimes we're a prop for people to do good and to find pleasure in doing good. So I go for alms on the weekend here at the International Institute of Theravada. And the village is uh, it's not very, not very wealthy. There's maybe even a few mud, mud houses on these roads that I go to. And recently, maybe there's been um, some wealth coming into the village, maybe because of the construction that's happening at this monastery. And some new brick houses have actually popped up. There's some old brick houses that are there. I think there's only one house that has uh, vehicles in it. The other, the other houses just have motorbikes and whatever. But I come on Saturday and Sunday usually when I have time, if I'm available and not too busy with exams. Maybe during exam week we don't go and maybe during the prep time as well. But I like to go for alms on Saturday and Sunday. I like to put myself in this position where I only eat what I receive from the alms. I take a little snack for breakfast, and then whatever I receive from the village, from these people who are very, <laughs> very far from being wealthy. That's what I eat. And it gives me so much pleasure to live off the donations of these people. And again, we're very passive, very passive in how we collect our food. We, we walk down, we stand in, some in front of some houses, and we know the houses that, that come out. And they, they come out of their house and they give, and they, they also have kids who love to give to the kids. Uh, they love to give to the monks. And yesterday, today is Sunday, and yesterday I had a monk and he asked me if he could go, if he could go with me for alms. And recently, recently we have the food and we have the, uh, the they put the rice in and then they take spoons of, of curry and they also put it in our bowl and it sort of mixes up together and we have extra and we, we put it out for the other monks to, to eat. But, you know, the rice absorbs sort of the, the liquid, you know, the sauce from the, the curry and it sort of gets all mixed up together. And recently we just started this uh, a system where we, we, we get it 
um, in uh, banana, banana leaves as sort of like, instead of a plastic bag, we have banana leaves. Everybody has banana leaves around here. And so, uh, yeah, my, my bowl is getting filled because there's, you know, there's packaging now. There's packaging. But it, it's good because when we have leftover food, which we always do, or most of the time, we can share it with the rest of the monks. Some monks come late, and also we, we share it um, on, the, on the buffet table where we have our main meal at lunch. It's there first. I made a point to actually put it there first so that we can take from it first if we want to, and usually people do, because they know it's uh, expensive, means that uh, it's, it's expensive with merit. A monk went and collected the food, and a monk uh, went to the village and brought it back, and, and the villagers, they woke up early so they could cook curry and rice. And so usually the monks, at least myself, and usually the other monks, they also take from there. And so this, this monk asked if he could come, and I said, yes, you know, because it's a lot of food that I have. It's a lot of packaging and whatever. I said, it would be, it'd be good if you came with me, because then uh, they, they would be giving me uh, this amount of food, but I could it would be less because, you know, instead of pouring a whole bowl in my food, uh, in my bowl, they, they pour a whole bowl of rice in my, in my bowl, uh, they're going to have to only pour half of it in my bowl. And so I said to him, I said, yes, you can help me bring back the food and it'll, it'll be less, less food, it'll be good. And so he came and, and that particular day, the first day, it took a, a little longer because they saw two monks and they didn't want to give just one packet. And so they ended up uh, coming late so that they could give more food for two monks instead. And I told them that one packet was fine because we're sharing the food anyways. And sometimes they only had one packet, especially to the people who only had one packet. I said, this is fine, it's good because we're sharing the food anyways. But the next day, today actually, <laughs> each, everybody just brought two packets of, of curries and a bigger bowl of rice to feed both of us. And our bowls were filled to the rim. His bowl is a little bigger than, than mine. He's from Laos and Lao, Lao and Thai and Lao monks, especially the junior ones, they have larger bowls. And so I was putting some of my packets into his bowl but because my, my bowl was already full. And not only that, there were more people giving so I stopped my route uh, at, at a certain point, and there's these two, ho two houses. Uh, one house is on the corner of the road, and so I, don't, I don't go any further. And now, instead of one lady, there's two ladies from two fa different families, I guess, and they're giving separate portions. And at the end of the road, I don't go any further, and... It used to be just one lady, and then it became two ladies, and then it became three ladies, and today there was four ladies, <laughs> two packets each. Uh, maybe, maybe one, I think one had one packet, I'm not sure, or maybe more than one, maybe more than two. Sometimes they just give so much, and we made it work. And they really like to give. I mean, we can really, we can really feel it. As a matter of fact, there was this one little girl she gave to us three times. She gave to us once, that was like the main thing, and then she chased after us again to give us these small little curry packets again, two of them, one each. And then on the way back, she had these uh, mangoes for us. I guess it's mango season. And so it's, it's a very uh, wonderful experience. And the, the kids, they, they love to give. And this brought back all these memories. And I love to give the blessing. I love to give the blessing. And I think they really like it too. 
Of course, it's part of their culture. It's not like giving it to Westerners. But I remember when I, when I gave uh, the blessing to, to Coral and her two parents, they, they would huddle. They would huddle together and they'd close their eyes. And they would, they would close their eyes. I would close my eyes too while I'm giving the chant. And, and I usually open up my eyes and I see them. They still have their eyes closed and they're all huddled together under their own umbrella. And it was very beautiful. And one day I, I asked them, I said, can I take a picture of you like this? And they, they, they allowed me to do that. And so I really like how, how, the, how people who do good, they do it again and again. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with that and it makes them happy and blissful. And I do this on the weekends. And on the weekends, we have some like high profile donors. They bring special food. They really do it up. And, and I make the determination not to eat any of the lunch food when they come. And I only take, normally, only take what I collect from the village. And I even share it with the extra monks. And when I came back, I was able to share it with the there was a Samanera who, who had an empty bowl and, and I filled it up for him. And I was like, well, what about this? What about this? And we have these banana leaves, these packets of banana leaves. And uh, they're like little containers almost. And I could, I could uh, scoop up the, the curries and just give him as much as he wanted. And I think, uh, yeah, I gave it to him before I even took for myself. So I was still organizing what I was giving to other people. So sometimes we put ourselves in this position where we can feel the, the benefits of going for alms, being content with what we receive, whether it's mixed up and all, all the curries are mixed up together, if it's in these banana packets. And we really feel that like in, in, in Hawaii, in Kauai, when I went there. Sometimes, one time, sometimes I ate some crazy stuff just to fill myself up, because that's all I got. Or in Myanmar, I also, I also one time just ate rice. I had to mix it with water, because one time I only got rice, and my, my stomach seized up. And so I had to boil water when that happened again. Mix it up, mix it with water. Sometimes I get sugar and I have like a sugar curry. And people complain about the oil and the, and the Myanmar food. If you eat like a local, you're not gonna complain about the oil because that oil is to flavor the rice. And sometimes you only get rice and you get one oily curry and that can, that can make or break whether you have a, a decent meal or whether you need to put water. And so it gives you contentment and satisfaction in, in collecting the alms and making your livelihood. It makes you think a lot about cause and effect, making merit, making merit by the people that are giving the food, they're making merit. You're making merit by <laughs> putting yourself in that position and going and collecting the food and making merit also in giving it to the other monks, giving the food to the other monks. Making merit by doing meditation along the way and taking care of your own mind. Making merit by thinking about cause and effect so there are so many uh, contemplations that can, be, that can be done when you go for alms, whether it's in Kauai or it's in Sri Lanka, anywhere. And it's a wonderful experience. And I felt very inspired. 
and I wanted to share that with you. And I'll read the English again for you from the Dhammapada. As a bee gathers honey from the flower without injuring its color or fragrance, even so does a sage go on his alms round in the village. And should a person do good, let him do it again and again. Let him find pleasure there. For being blissful is the accumulation of good. So may what inspires me also inspire you to do good again and again and use that cause and effect and happy feeling you get from giving to fuel your aspirations, to apply the Buddhist teachings, to follow morality, to put into practice concentration and insight so that you may reach Nibbana safely and quickly. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.